Hi friends, are you ready to learn MCQ solving techniques that will help you solve the questions at least two to three times faster? Are you ready to practice more MCQ questions? Then this video is just for you. So keep your pen and paper ready since this is not a theoretical video. We are going to be solving questions together. We got a great response on our last video where I've shown some more MCQ tips and tricks. So in case you missed that video, do check it out. I'll put a link to it here. And do check out the full courses on our website, manochaacademy.com and our Android app, Manocha Academy. I'll put the links below. All right, fasten your seat belts and let's get started. What is observed when lead nitrate salt is heated? Chemistry exam is like a detective exam where you have to predict the colors, the observations, and again, to save time, quickly think of the reaction. Because once you know the products, you can easily predict the observation. So when lead nitrate salt is heated, the reaction is going to be something like this. We are going to get lead oxide, nitrogen dioxide, and oxygen. Once again, don't bother to balance the equation. Nobody's checking your equation. You just need the products. And what are the options we have? It's all about the color of gases here. So we know that nitrogen dioxide is a reddish brown gas. NO2 is a reddish brown gas and oxygen is colorless. So we cannot select two options here. So what is the one option you will choose? Obviously colorless gas, you will not observe it just like we can't see oxygen and nitrogen. So the correct answer here will be reddish brown gas. So use your equations to be confident and correctly and quickly predict the right observation in chemistry. Another assertion reason question for you to practice. Once again, remember, look at the assertion and reason separately. Check only if both are true. Then you look at the dependency between the two to see if the reason is the correct explanation of A. So let's take a look here. The assertion is electrolysis is used for extraction of aluminium from its ore. And we know that it's true. We do electrolysis of alumina, aluminium oxide to get aluminium. Reason is aluminium has high reactivity. If you think about the reactivity series, aluminium is pretty high on the reactivity series. So definitely reason is also true. So assertion is true and reason is true. That means now we need to focus on options A and B because both assertion reason are true we really need to see is the reason the correct explanation of the assertion because these options are always going to be the same for assertion reason. These are the standard options. So just do a quick check and now move to solving the question. So we definitely know that electrolysis is used for the extraction of highly reactive metals like sodium, potassium or aluminium. And we have to use electrolysis because other re uh, reducing agents are not effective in removing uh, these highly reactive metals from their ores. So clearly the reason is the correct explanation of A. So I would go for option number A. Both A and R are true and the reason is the correct explanation of the assertion. So this is how you solve these questions. Look at them separately and then analyze. Next try this question. When light moves from a rarer medium to a denser medium, what is the relation between angle of incidence and angle of refraction? And some options are given to you. Now, this is a very simple question, but again, I strongly recommend you to draw a rough diagram. Because it's an MCQ exam, your diagram doesn't have to be neat. Please visualize the question by drawing a rough diagram and then select the correct answer. This is to avoid your careless mistakes. So let's quickly draw a rough diagram. So light is moving from a rarer medium to a denser medium and when that happens we know light bends towards the normal. So let's roughly draw that and this is the angle of incidence, this is the angle of refraction. So clearly you can see in this question angle of incidence is greater than angle of refraction. The angle in the rarer medium is bigger and than the angle in the denser medium and always these angle of incidence refraction are measured with respect to the normal. So the correct answer here is going to be I greater than R. So please, please draw this quick rough sketch, visualize the question and then take the correct answer. Drawing rough diagrams is not a waste of time. That's how you can solve the question fast 
and accurately. Here's the next question. If a is to b is 3 is to 2, then find a plus b whole square is to a minus b whole square. So here you might be thinking this is a componendo dividendo base question and you might use the componendo dividendo and solve it and I'm sure you'll get the answer. But again, some smart MCQ tricks that you can do here since it's given to you a is to b is 3 is to 2. So we know a by b is 3 by 2 and we want to find this expression. If a by b is 3 by 2, we know that a and b is 3k and 2k. But here we can even take the value of k as 1. So we can literally uh, substitute let a equal to 3 and b equal to 2 because we know that this expression is going to be the same for whatever value of a and b as long as it's in the ratio 3 is to 2. So I can take the simple values 3 and 2. Now all you have to do is just substitute these values in what you want to find. So a plus b whole square by a minus b whole square just plug in the values 3 plus 2 whole square by 3 minus 2 whole square. So that's 5 square by 1 square, 25 is to 1. There you go, you are done. So the correct answer is 25 is to 1 here. So you can assume a and b to have certain values because there's no restriction in the question. It just says a is to b is 3 is to 2. So I can take it here and you can get the right answer. And of course, if you solved it by componendo dividendo, you would have done a plus b by a minus b is 3 plus 2 by 3 minus 2, you would get 5 is to 1 and then again you would square it so you will get the same answer but we solved it very fast just by taking a and b as 3 and 2. So again some smart MCQ tricks to get to the answer very quickly. Now we have a trigonometry question here. If 2 sin square beta minus cos square beta is 2 then what is the value of beta? And I think this question has been taken from one of the specimen papers issued by the board. So how do you solve this question? One, of course, you can use trigonometric identities and try to solve for the value of beta, the angle here. But if you look at the options, can you see nice standard angles are given 0, 90, 45 and 30. So do you really want to apply identities or you can just go ahead and substitute this value in the expression given and see which angle satisfies the equation given to us. So whichever angle satisfies the correct equation is going to be the answer. So let's substitute the value of beta. We are going to put uh, beta as 0 degrees. So for option number A, it's going to be 2 sine square 0. Sine 0 is 0, so sine square 0 is also going to be 0. So 2 times 0 minus cos of 0 is 1. So 1 square cos square beta is going to be 1 there. So we are getting minus 1 it's not satisfying the equation here. So option A is not correct. Let's try option B. 2 sine square 90. Sine 90 is 1. So sine square 90 is going to be 1 square. So we are basically getting 2 times 1 minus cos of 90 is 0. So cos square beta is going to be 0 there. So we are going to be getting 2. And now you can see it satisfies the equation. So clearly option B is going to be the correct answer. So again, you can just do simple hit and trial, just plug in the values. You can see it's very fast. No need to go for identities and all, and you can solve this sum pretty quickly. Now, if you use the identity method, you can see two sine square beta minus cos square beta. We have replaced with one minus sine square beta. So you sit and solve all of this. You are going to be getting sine square beta as one. So therefore beta is 90 degree. Again, we are getting the same answer, but you guys decide is this faster or this method? I think substituting and doing a simple hit and trial with the values is very fast for these kind of questions. What do you guys think? If you're enjoying this video and finding it helpful, please hit the subscribe button for our YouTube channel. Thanks for subscribing. Let's try this one. If 29x plus 37y is 103 and 37x plus 29y is 95, then what is the value of x and y? Now, if you look at these numbers, you might say, oh my God, how do I solve these big equations? Let's take a look. So we have 29x plus 37y is 103 and then we have 37x plus 29y is 95. So again, you can think in MCQ questions, is there some trick here? Because you know, just solving this by substitution or elimination is going to be complicated, right? So whenever you have this, you know, 
kind of crisscross coefficients. You have 29 here, 29 here, 37 here, 37 here. What you can do? That's right. You can add and subtract the equations. So let's go ahead and do that. So if you add both of these equations, what are you going to get? 66x plus 66y equals 198. And if you divide by 66, the equation is going to be really simple. x plus y equals 3. Wow, isn't that simple? And same thing, you subtract these two equations. So first, let's put down the simplified equation here. So we have x plus y equal to 3. That is one equation. And for the other equation, I'm just going to subtract these two equations. And let's see what do we get. So we are going to get here minus 8x plus 8y equals 8 or minus x plus y equals 1. So that's our second equation. So can you see how we have simplified our two linear equations in two variables from those complicated equations into these really simple ones? Now you can easily solve them. If you add the equations, x will cancel. So y is going to turn out to be 2 because 2y is 4 and therefore x is 1. So this is the final answer here. And there you go. It's going to be option number A. So this is a smart way to solve these equations really fast. Or the other option is you can simply substitute the values of x and y into these equations. That's right. You can use that cheating trick and just put down x and y and see which values of x and y will satisfy both those equations. So you don't even have to do all of this. So whichever one you feel is faster for you, you can do that and solve this sum really fast. In this question, we have been given if cot theta is 1 by root 3, then the value of 1 minus cos square theta by 2 minus sine square theta is what? So take a look at what you have been given. We know that cot theta is 1 by root 3. I like to think in terms of tan theta. So I'm going to take a reciprocal of that. And so it's going to be tan theta is root 3. And we need to find 1 minus cos square theta by 2 minus sine square theta. So one way of thinking is, can I change this expression to tan theta? Or maybe if I think tan theta is root 3, hey, I know that value. Isn't theta a standard angle here? What is the correct value of theta? That's right. Theta is 60 degrees. So that's great. Now that we know the angle, it's very simple. We just have to substitute theta as 60 degree here. So find cos square theta, sine square theta. Just simplify the expression and boom, you're done. So here you can see the solution. So we got theta as 60 degree here and substituted in the expression that is given. Uh, cos 60 we know is half. So cos square 60 is going to be 1 by 4. Similarly, sine 60 is root 3 by 2. So sine square 60 is going to be 3 by 4. Simplify it and you're going to get 3 by 5. So the correct answer here is option number C, 3 by 5. So look for those standard angles because these will make trigonometry questions really easy for you. And make sure you learn that table of standard angles for sine theta, cos theta, tan theta for the values of 0, 30, 45, 60 and 90 degrees. Very important for your trigonometry. Let's take a look at this question. If 2x plus root of 4x square minus 1 by 2x minus root of 4x square minus 1 is 4, then using the property of proportion, what is the value of x? So again, you can solve this question using the property of proportion and the standard technique. But again, we can be smart here. We want to find the value of x. Some options are given. So why not use hit and trial? That's going to be faster. Just substitute the values of x in the question and see which option is right. So start from the first option and let's go down. So if we take a look at the first option here, 2 times half plus square root of, I'm just substituting the value of x there, 4 times x squared is going to be 1 by 4 minus 1 divided by the same thing over here. So once you have calculated the numerator, you just have to change this to a minus in the denominator. So let's work out these values first. So what are we going to get? Uh, this is going to be 1 plus the 4 and 4 gets uh, cancelled here. So that's square root of 0. So 1 plus 0 divided by 1 minus 0. So that's 1 by 1. That's not giving us the answer. We want 4. So let's quickly move on to the next option here. So again, it's going to be 2 times 5 by 8 plus square root of 
4 times x square. So that's basically 25 by 64. So that's 5 by 8 square. I have substituted there minus 1. So let's work this out. What are we getting for the numerator? And with the denominator, we'll just change the sign to a minus. So we are going to get 5 by 4 plus square root of, so this is going to give me 25 by 16 minus 1, 5 by 4 plus square root of 9 by 16. So what are we getting? We are finally getting 5 by 4 plus 3 by 4. So that's 8 by 4, which is 2. So in the numerator, we have 2. In the denominator, we'll have a 5 by 4 minus 3 by 4, which is basically nothing but 2 by 4 or half. So if you do 2 divided by half, you're going to get 4, which is your answer. And that's exactly what we want. So the correct answer is option B. So there I solved this question without knowing property of proportion. We didn't have to use that. Just directly substitute. You can see the calculations are going to be pretty simple. So you can solve this question very fast. And of course, if you go for the detailed method, you can use componendo, dividendo, but there you can see it's not going to be that easy. That is why our fast trick was pretty good because you'll have to do all these calculations. You have to take care of the square root, do the square, and then finally you'll arrive at the answer. So sometimes pure hit and trial with the options given to you is a pretty fast and simple technique. Let's try this question. The vertices of a parallelogram in order are A, B, C and D. The vertices are given to you. So you have to find the value of this X and Y. So one very important trick in these kind of coordinate geometry questions is to quickly draw a rough diagram and visualize. Trust me, drawing diagrams is not a waste of time. It's going to speed up your thinking and the way of solving your question. So let's draw a rough diagram right now. So I'm going to draw a parallelogram here and we know it's a parallelogram. So let's mark that here and let's quickly put down the vertices. So A is 1 comma 2, B is given to us 4 comma Y, C is X comma Y and D is 3 comma 5. So we have to find the value of this X and Y here. So what do you guys think? How do we solve this question? Some of you might be thinking that, you know, in a parallelogram, opposite sides are equal. So maybe we can go for distance formula. But distance formula, you know, is complicated with that square root, X2 minus X1 whole square plus Y2 minus Y1 whole square. So always think, is there a simpler way to solve this question? So this is one of my favorite questions because you don't need distance formula. You can solve it using midpoint formula. That's right. If you take a look at the diagonals here, AC and BD, we know that the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. So AO is equal to CO and BO equals DO. So basically O is the midpoint of AC and O is also the midpoint of BD. So now we can use midpoint formula and just, you know, find the midpoint in terms of A and C, B and D, equate it and find X and Y. So go ahead and try it and you'll see how fast it is. So if you guys uh, take a look at the midpoint of A and C, what is it going to be? 1 plus x by 2 and the y coordinate is going to be 2 plus 6 by 2 here. And if you look at the midpoint of B and D, that's going to be 4 plus 3 by 2 and y plus 5 by 2. So let's simplify these values and compare. So what do we have here? We have uh, 1 plus x by 2 comma 4. And here we have 7 by 2 comma y plus 5 by 2. So that's it. We just need to compare because we know the midpoints are same. So this x coordinates are equal. These y coordinates are equal. Find your value of x and y. So if you equate it, you're going to see that 1 plus x is 7. So x is going to turn out to be 6 here. And y plus 5 by 2 is 4. So we multiply that. Uh, we take the 2 there. 4 times 2 is 8. So y is going to be? 8 minus 3, y is going to turn out to be 3. So the correct option here would be x and y have values 6 comma 3. So I would go for this as the answer, 6 comma 3. And there you can see using midpoint theorem, we have solved this question really, really fast. So during MCQ, think, can I do the question in a better way? Can I do it in a faster way rather than always using a lengthy method? And usually you'll see, except for of course some questions which you have to solve in the standard way, there is some trick given in the question. I hope you found this video helpful. So do share this video with your friends. And if you're new to our channel, 
do hit the subscribe button and the notification bell as we keep posting science and maths videos on our YouTube channel. And do check the full courses on our website manuchaacademy.com. We have full courses on physics, chemistry, biology, maths and computer coding. The courses include live classes, concept videos, mock tests, quizzes, questions and revision notes. So they will be great for your exam preparation. We also have our Android app Manucha Academy. I will put all these links below. So do check it out. Here is wishing you all the best for your exams. I am sure you will do great. Thanks for watching and sharing.